Hello everyone and welcome back to another video and in this video I'm going to be showing you a 0 to 10k per month full YouTube automation tutorial guide and so do bear with me because I am going to be using my iPad for the first time to kind of demonstrate some strategies and steps in order to hit that 10k per month mark. Now I've been doing YouTube automation for the past four years. I have a full-time income from it. My highest grossing month was around like 35k in a single month and even so now I'm still making over five figures with YouTube automation itself. Starting off, okay, so I do have some notes that I'm going to be reading off of here. The first thing you want to do is choose a niche, right? And so everyone always asks, you know, what niche should I choose? And so I'm going to tell you, but keep in mind, I highly recommend always going into a niche in which you know about, uh, going into a niche that you actually keep up to date with. Golden question, John, what niche should I go into? I like niches that are in sports, TV shows, and celebrities, okay? And if you can think out of the box, any niche where there's something upcoming to help build anticipation, that tends to be a good niche. So I've been in sports, TV shows, and celebrities for over close to four and a half years now. And so that's where my bias is towards, okay? But the more niche you go to, the more niche you go, the better. So I have uh, channels that talk about a specific sport. I have channels that talk about a specific TV show. Uh, my celebrities channel is still kind of general. I just tackle any news that comes my way. But that's the first step, okay? Choosing a niche where there's something upcoming, there's something that people can actually anticipate. And choosing a niche where ideally it's browse-based. And so I wanna go over what browse-based means. So browse-based channels, are basically YouTube channels where most of your traffic comes from browse, meaning that your videos are being shown on the homepage of viewers. So browse-based channels tend to go pretty viral. They tend to die off though, which is a con. They get a lot of views, a lot of views over a short amount of time, okay? So just the other day, I'd say a week ago, I had like a $1,200 day just because one of my browse videos took off. But now that video is barely making like $50 a day. So it's important to understand what browse-based channels are because with this strategy, in order to get to 10K per month, we are gonna utilize browse-based channels. And so using browse-based channels, okay, it involves the concept of understanding trends. I know YouTube automation is all about outsourcing, outsourcing a script writer, outsourcing a voiceover artist, outsourcing a video editor and thumbnail designer. But if you really want to succeed and go from zero to 10K per month, I really think that you should understand your niche and understand what trends are happening, okay? So understanding trends is something that I do across all my channels. It's something that I can't really outsource. It's something that I do keep up to date with on a day-to-day -day basis. So you do have to understand the trends that are happening within your niche, whether you're in sports, whether you're in celebrities, or whether you're in like upcoming cars or TV shows or movies, understanding like what's upcoming is very important to the success of your channel. It's really as easy as just, you know, following niche related Instagram accounts or reading blog articles within your niche and just understanding what's actually happening with your niche. So to understand trends, as I mentioned before, niche related, let's say Reddit groups, Facebook groups, IG groups, you can even do, what else? IG, Facebook, and Instagram are my biggest ways that I try to keep up with my niche. Looking at competitor channels also helps. So competitor channels, that's pretty crucial. And so for your competitor channels, if you don't wanna keep up with the, your niche on Instagram, if you don't wanna keep up with your niche on Facebook, you can use competitor channels and you only need like around three of these channels to actually keep a close eye on. So competitor channels, ideally when you're finding competitor channels, these should be channels where uh, small sub count and a lot of views on their videos. 
Channels where their view count is exceeding the number of subscribers that they have kind of proves that their videos are being put into the algorithm and that's how you sh that's who you should be taking a look at. So far to recap, we have choose a niche, we have understanding browse-based channels, which are channels in which we're gonna be posting video topics where the goal is for those videos to go viral over a short period of time. You have to understand trends within your niche and because if you understand the trends that are happening within your niche, you should be able to create videos that get views. Now, the third step here, okay, is to familiarize yourself with, yourself with tools. So the tools that I would recommend is that we're gonna use chat GPT or Claude slash Claude, either one is good. We're going to use Levin Labs for the voiceovers. And then we're gonna use Upwork for hiring the rest of the team. So Upwork to hire video editors. And if you want, I'd say thumbnail. Thumbnail. So these are the tools that I would recommend as far as starting your YouTube automation channel off. Uh, Chat GPT and Claude to actually write the scripts, Eleven Labs to actually create the voiceovers. And I still recommend human video editors and thumbnails just because uh, there's a difference between like good looking thumbnails and thumbnails that actually convert. Humans are still better at peaking curiosity when it comes to creating thumbnails. Whereas AI just creates really, really good looking images, but it's not sparking that curious factor. It's not getting people to click. It's a good looking image, don't get me wrong, but I would still personally prefer human thumbnails and video editors. Now for step number four, we have assembling a team, right? Assembling the team. So for the team, uh, these are the breakdown marks that I'm gonna recommend. So for chat GPT and Claude, you can do yourself for now. But if you want someone to actually write the scripts for you using AI, if you want someone to actually create uh, the voiceover using Eleven Labs for you, let me write it back up here that this is for scripts. And this right here is for voiceovers, okay? If you want someone to actually do that, you can hire someone from, I'd say, five to eight dollars an hour to handle scripts and to handle voiceovers. For a video editor, I'd say get it for at least $20 for an eight minute video edit. Actually, I actually have some video editors are doing 15 minutes for $20. So we'll say for a 15 minute video edit. And then for thumbnails, so I'm just gonna put TN. This can be about, I'd say $5 or less. So to recap, if you want someone to write, create the scripts for you, you can pay them hourly, like five to $8 an hour to create scripts using AI and to kind of create voiceover using AI as well. For a video editor, try to get them for about $20 a video edit for like a 15 minute video edit. And then for thumbnails, you're gonna go for $5 or less. I personally pay like around $3.30 to $3 per thumbnail. Now, moving on with assembling the team, some main points that you want to make is get your costs as low as possible because starting off you are going to go negative really quickly if each video is costing you let's say a hundred dollars which i hope it's not if you post five videos and they don't work you're already down five hundred dollars so right from the get-go getting your costs as low as possible is extremely important. And this is why I'm introducing the idea of using ChatGPT to create, write your scripts and using Eleven Labs to create your voiceovers. And the goal here is to get your costs as low as possible, especially from the get-go, so that you don't fall so negative. Before, when I was uh, starting YouTube Automation, my assembly line consisted of all human everything. So video costs were being anywhere from about $60 to $100. But now with the introduction of AI, you can get your video costs to be like less than $30 for a 15 minute video edit. Regarding the 15 minute video edit, longer videos build more watch time in YouTube eyes, okay? More watch time. What I mean by this is that if you have a 15 minute video edit and I only watch about 50% of your video, that's about seven minutes of watch time. Whereas if you have an eight minute long video edit, someone needs to watch 100% of your video in order to beat that seven minute watch time. Longer videos just tend to build more watch time and that's a recognizable factor on YouTube's eyes. So for kind of like a cookie trademark 
uh, goal to go after. 15 minute long videos is what I would recommend to make your videos as long as. If you can make them longer without fluffing it out with unnecessary information, then that's still really good as well. But the longer the video, the better as long as it's not packed with needless information. So right now, I went over some tools that you can use. Uh, that'll be linked down below in the description. I went over assembling the team. The next step we're gonna go over is packaging. So with packaging, The thumbnail title, which I call like the three T, so thumbnail, thumbnail, title, and idea. Sorry, so thumbnail, title, and idea, not the three T's, it's like T, T, and I. So the thumbnail, title, and idea, if I had to pinpoint something that you should put a lot of your time and attention towards, it's literally this, okay? This is the key to just getting videos to go viral, even if you have mediocre scripts, even if you have mediocre voiceovers, even if you have a mediocre video edit. If the thumbnail and title and idea of your video is like top notch, like 3000%, your video has a good chance of working, all right? I put all my time and attention towards thumbnails, titles, and ideas, and I barely ever read my scripts. I don't really care too much about the voiceover. The content of your video, right? The content of your video just needs to deliver what your title says. Your title says. So the content of your, your video just needs to deliver what your title says. It's, you know, there's like different pillars that you can excel on YouTube. You can excel with really good content. You can excel with really good video editing. I found that if I excel or try to excel in thumbnail title and ideas, my content can just be mediocre and good enough to actually go viral on YouTube. So if I had to pinpoint just because there's so many cogwheels on YouTube to focus on, people are telling you to focus on your idea. People are telling you to focus on your, your video edit. People are telling you to focus on your thumbnail. There's so many cogwheels of what it takes to actually launch a good YouTube video that because you're probably only just one person, just focus on the thumbnail title and idea and really get that to work, okay? The content just needs to be okay. The content just needs to be 80% quality and deliver what the title of your video says. It just needs to connect, that's it. So keep it simple as far as, I don't really revise scripts as much. I don't really review uh, video edits as much. People are clicking because of the thumbnail and the title and the idea. You just need to deliver what they're actually clicking on your video for, right? So this right here is a very, very important concept to understand. And it's only one of the strategies or one of the ways to actually get a video to work on YouTube. And like I mentioned, there's so many different ways you can get a video to work on YouTube to the point in which, you know, I just decide to choose on this strategy alone when it comes to browse based channels. Moving on to the next step, we have the tree trunk concept. So what this is, is that when you start understanding your niche, okay, when you understand, um, remember how I talked about earlier understanding trends? So, or understanding trends and keeping up to date with what's happening in your niche. The tree trunk concept, and I'll try to exemplify this. So that's my tree trunk, this is the grass. This right here is what all major news outlets are talking about, all right? Major news outlets. So the trunk, okay, is the main news that happened in the media. It's what everyone's talking about. It's what all the major news outlets are talking about, ESPN, Yahoo, uh, CNN. It's what they're talking about. What you need to think about are the branches, right? What are the branches of the topics? So this is you. What are the sub branches of that main topic that you can spin off of that people aren't talking about? And this concept right here is something that I know not a lot of people talk about. But if you start thinking about the news as the main tree trunk and everyone is talking about it, okay? What is something related that you can spin off in another topic that are basically the sub branches of that tree trunk? And this is what I always target, okay? When something happens within my niches, I don't really talk about the main event as much. I like to talk about spin off topics related to the main event. An example here would be Donald Trump recently got attempted an assassination. So my spin off topic would be the dark actions that Donald Trump was doing while almost getting assassinated. So it's kind of like a spin off topic, right? So this concept here is what leads to like very creative and innovative ideas where you know that the main trunk here 
is something that is everything that people are talking about. So it is trending, but if you do the sub branches, what are the branches to that tree trunk that you can talk about, right? That's where you can also get a ton of views. So this is the concept that I always try to explain in our community in which there's a main event. What are the branches that you can spin off and talk about so that you can get videos to go viral as well. Now, moving on from step number six, we have number seven. It's a basic concept, a basic cardinal rule of YouTube post consistently okay and when you post consistently this ties to the concept of sample size so sample size meaning you can't make logical judgments if you only have two videos posted on a trending topic you need to like get a large enough sample size it's a very taught well taught about subject in school you know sample versus population where you can't have you can't make logical decisions if your sample size is only out of three videos talking about a trending topic. When I have a trending topic, I usually put like eight plus videos related to that trending topic. That's why you have to get your costs as low as possible again, because if you're spending $100 per video, that's gonna be like $800 on a trending topic. But if you understand your niche, and if you're looking at other, other competitors, all right, if you zoom out, you should get views if you make a video on a trending topic that is in demand. So posting consistently and then understanding that sample size, you have to have a big enough sample size to make logical conclusions. Posting three videos and them not working and then thinking, oh, this topic doesn't work. You need to post a good amount of videos. So sample size, there's no hard number that kind of demonstrates sample size. Mine is eight videos to kind of demonstrate and see if a very uh, trending topic actually works. But moving on from that though, I think the last one is simply doubling down. Double down. Once you have a video that works, okay, and technically a video that works means that the views are greater than your sub count or your views are in browse traffic. If you're getting browse traffic on a certain topic, double down. What I mean by doubling down is rewrite the script, rewrite and put it back into production, or create more spin-off topics, right? Create spin-off topics. So doubling down, it's a really easy concept, but I really mean like when doubling down, if you have a video that works, just recreate the same exact video. And that's what I emphasize, like literally the same exact video. On some of my channels, if you guys know what my channels are, once a topic works on my channel, I'll just reiterate the same exact title, very the thumbnail, very little, and just do the same exact video over and over and over and over again until I don't get views on that topic anymore. So same exact video as close as possible because most of your viewers will come from non-subscribers. But even so, that's kind of like my, how many steps was that? That's my eight steps to kind of get you to that 10K per month mark. In future videos, I'll be going more into detail, other strategies you can use to get to that 10K per month mark. If you're interested in more content like this, do subscribe to the channel. And if you're interested in seeing if you can join our mentorship program, do check that out in the link below as well. But thank you so much for watching everyone. I hope you found that helpful and I'll see you all in the next video. Take care.